Okay, take two. <laughs> this time I'm actually sharing my screen. Let me make sure that we're live and I'll delete the last one. Now I don't have to be close up. Okay. There we are. All right. So this is my live video to say, yay, I'm done. <laughs> After three days of me being in the survey, uh, analyzing it, and two full days of my assistant Angie being in the survey, analyzing it, and one full day of my poor, poor husband, Mr. Storm, having to pull all the individual numbers for the genre charts for me because it was making my eyes hurt, we finally have all the data, and we even have a screen share so I can show the sexy versus sweet romance data, which I think is the most interesting of all. Um, and I just wanted to say for those who are new to Lit Ring, I'm Melissa Storm. Hello. Um, I own Lit Ring and a bajillion other businesses, Novel Publicity, the author site. Uh, what else do I own? Your author engine training courses, which makes it particularly sad that I did the video wrong because I do like two of these a week. Um, <laughs> but that's me. I'm also a Christian and sweet romance author. Um, just recently made the USA Today bestsellers list. And a bajillion years ago, I'm almost 33. And back like 10 years ago, I got my graduate degree in survey methodology and quantitative sociology. So I'm trained as a survey monkey, maybe not survey monkey because that's a company, but I'm trained to do surveys and analyze data. And I used to do some pretty complex data sets for the University of Michigan, um, like dyadic analysis and things. And that was like 10 years ago. That was a different life. Um, Basically, I love data because it tells a story and I love stories. Hello, I'm an author. Um, so I get really excited by numbers and what you can learn by looking at them. And it's always exciting to me when I'm able to trot out that old degree and actually use it <laughs> in my career. It's, it's also why I really like doing websites and ads because I really like data and get a lot out of it. So when I decided to survey the Lit Ring readers, at the time, I think we had about 40. 5,000 readers on our newsletter, um, and I am continually scrubbing to remove inactive readers uh, to keep our list healthy and effective. We only send usually once a week, but we've started sending twice a week, um, so it's not a daily spamola. We're very conscious about how much we're sharing. Um, like I said, one to two times a week, when we offer free books, it's three free books with the full description and the cover, and they can sign up directly for the author's list. It's not enter your email here and get 500 free books and enter 500 lists. We try to be really respectful of our readers' time and to deliver high-quality subs for our authors. So that's just a little bit about all of that. Um, and also for your author engine, if you go to yourauthorengine.com, I have a free course, so you can watch that course. But anyway the data. So when I decided to survey the Lit Ring readers, um, I was really happy because the first send when I asked the newsletter to take it, we got over 4,000 responses. And I was like, oh, this is easy. I'm going to get 10,000. Because I have OCD, I'm very open about it, and sometimes I fixate on numbers. So I had to have a good round 10,000. That seems like a great number to hit the law of large numbers with statistics. Um, because the larger the sample you have, the more closely it's going to conform to the true norms of the population. So a lot of authors run surveys with a couple hundred readers. And that's interesting data, but we don't know if it's a representative sample. Littering is a multi-genre newsletter. We have a lot of genres. 10,000 is a huge number. I don't think I've seen a reader survey that large before. And the fact that we were able to break it down by genre, but also by strength, um, so that we didn't, I didn't just ask readers, do you like romance, yes or no? I said, do you read it often? Do you read it rarely? Or do you read it never? And I did it like that because I only wanted three data points because I wanted to force, are they an avid fan or are they someone who can be swayed by a good pitch? And that all went into this data and we were able to look at the sometimes readers versus the genre super fans versus the general reader population for all of these charts. So there's some really good data and really good analysis. And I've already decided that this is going to be a yearly thing with Lit Ring. Um, so I'm going to turn this into a longitudinal survey, which means that a lot of the questions are going to be the same every year so that we can track trends. 
Um, first of all, over the general reader population, um, is Amazon losing market share? Are readers demanding fewer free books? Um, are what they writing in, is that changing? Do they want more author interaction in 2018? So we can look at those over time. We can also study lit rings list and say, okay, last year mysteries was the biggest share. Did my efforts to grow horror and urban fantasy and some of the other underrepresented genres, did they pay off? Do we have more in those genres? Do they represent a bigger piece of the pie? So looking at the company, and then I'll be adding in some new questions for things I want to know, like um, what do readers think of box sets, multi-author box sets, and whatever the really current exciting questions are. For um, the first survey, I wanted to narrow it just to 10 questions because I wanted readers to complete it because it's a huge ask. It's a big survey with a long list of genres. But I think as the company's more established, keep in mind we're we're only less than a year old, founded January 1st of this year. But as we're more established and readers know us better and trust us more, we can ask more. Um, and I also have a lot of data beyond the survey data. And I have dogs, which is what you hear. <laughs> I didn't have to introduce him because crash! That's my new fee. Hopefully he'll be quiet. But um, crash, please. Trying to do a Facebook Live for the for the authors, Crash. I swear. Um, but uh, I have data from other sources. Like they take quizzes to tell us to get custom free book recommendations. And I save that data. And for the... Sorry. Crash, come here. Crash. 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 Just ruining my video. Ugh. Sorry about that. Um, for the, sorry, just a second. Crash! Come here. That's naughty, Crash. I'm not letting you outside. We have a really crazy, horrible, mean neighbor, and he likes to bark at her, and that doesn't help anybody. Um, if you're friends with me on Facebook, you know that story. Anyway. <laughs> Um, the nons on the monthly nons on we get a lot of readers enrolling in that and um, I ask questions like this in October I found out from 10,000 readers how much interaction and how frequently they want authors to send newsletters how they feel about audiobooks next month I will be learning sorry, my dogs. next month I'm asking about how they find new authors to read and what's the other thing I'm asking Something else that I was really excited about, oh, pre-orders, how likely they are to pre-order and what pushes that decision. So each month I get this information and I share it. Um, I'll be sharing the October data soon. And authors who do our list builders also get that information. So the authors in the non -Zom will know their retailer, the audiobook preference, how frequently the readers want to be emailed, lots of cool stuff. Data is awesome. So um, I've done this giant survey. <laughs> I've been posting about it all day. I think you guys know how much work it's been and how excited I am. And I want to know if there are any questions before I dive into the sexy versus sweet data. I don't see any yet. I think there might be a little bit of a delay, but that's okay. If you have questions at any time, please post them because uh, it makes it more interesting for me. But you guys can go to the new Lit Ring About page, litring.com slash about, to see the write-up. You can also see the team. This is me when I actually try to look, up, look halfway decent. <laughs> it's a little different, um, but you have the gen generic, not generic, you have the general reader overview about the whole population here with the write-up, including what the heck does content mean? What does newsletters mean? Here's the summary of that. If you sign up at the top of the page, you will get my white paper, which is everything, um, including some stuff I haven't even shared with the group. My glasses are askew. It's like, what is happening in my world? So this is the white paper that I'm working on. It's everything on the site and that I've shared in the group and even then some. And this crazy, crazy thing is going to be like, looks like 24 pages. So I'm going to turn this into a PDF and I'm going to send it to our entire mailing list. So if you want the full thing, rather than trying to groom through these posts, sign up. I'll probably talk about the survey again at another point um, if I get questions. But yeah, 
So I've been working on that, and I saved the best charts for last. Let's see if I have any questions. I so badly want questions. Kelly says, I have mysteries and thrillers. Thank you for sharing. Now I know that mystery should be wide. Yay. And I see a lot of people watching their eyeballs. They don't know that I like questions because they must not have been in my book launch course. But that's okay. Um, link for that, Cindy. Yeah. Pretty sure you're on our list. I hope you are. But you can sign up at Lit Ring About or Lit Ring Authors. You want to be on the authors list. Sorry again about my new fee. Let's look at the sexy versus sweet data. Um, so as I've been posting each of the things, I've been saying what I'm noticing about the frequent genre fans versus the sometimes genre fans who can be swayed by a good book or a good sales pitch versus the, the um, general reading population. So, you know, is your genre more likely to be on KU? Crash! I don't want to let him out because then he'll attack her neighbor and then she'll call the police. He doesn't like attack her. That's, it's horrible to say. She's just crazy. Anyways, my Facebook friends know this. You can me if you want to hear about crazy dear lady neighbor. That's not the point of this video, Crash. Okay, so what readers want. The, th the question, what do you wish more authors would do for their readers was fully right in. So my beautiful, wonderful, fabulous assistant Angie DeMonte went through and codified all 10,000 responses for that question to suss out the trend so that we could look at that. So there's a key to that that explains more what each category means, but that is gold. Like that, that plus the genre breakouts I think are so important and the sexy sweet thing I'm really excited. About. Actually, I'm excited to share it. I'm not excited about what the data says Ugh. as a sweet romance author. There's a teaser. Spoilers ahead. Um, I'm high on data right now, so I promise I'm a smart, level-headed person doing this. I've just been in the data a lot. <laughs> but okay, sexy versus sweet. Let's see it. Get the report, or I think you should sign up for Lit Ring, but if you don't want to do that to get the report, you can cruise through the, um, the feed in the Lit Ring group, and you'll see most of the data there, plus the sexy and sweet is in this video. Um, and enough about that. I'm going to show you sexy versus sweet. Um, your uh, Kelly says, your results were so comprehensive, no questions, just geeking out over the data. So you get it. You also want to talk with your hands and use high-pitched voices about data, drunk on data. And Kelly wants to know how many readers are whales, read all the things. I don't know that, but I'll find out. Um, there's a lot of love for crazy dear lady. <laughs> My neighbor. Okay. Sexy versus sweet. Let's go. So special graphs. What the colors mean changed a little here because Excel wouldn't let me keep all readers as green. So now all readers is purple. Readers who, so these are readers who often read. We threw out the readers who sometimes read. So we wanted the enthusiastic genre fans. So the enthusiastic sweet readers who don't read sexy is blue. The enthusiastic sexy romance readers who don't read sweet is red. And the enthusiastic readers of both genres is green versus the general reading population of all genres is purple. Now, this isn't sexy contemporary versus sweet contemporary. This is just sexy romance, sweet romance, whatever it meant to that reader taking that survey. So this could be paranormal sweet. This could be romantic suspense sweet, historical sweet. Um, most people, I think, think of contemporary, but I think it's important if you, if you are on the sexy or sweet side, or you could be swayed to one side or the other to consider this for all romance genres. And the sad thing is, is that the most, uh, the big cluster, I'm trying not to swear because I'm a Christian romance author, the giant cluster freak of freebie seekers those are your sweet romance readers, even more than historical. And if you are a sweet historical romance author, I am so sorry. <laughs> Zeta is not your friend. At least I write contemporary, so there's some good news there. Um, but you see this bar is insane. Now, sexy readers are less likely than the general population to only want free books. Sweet readers, they want those free books. Um, sweet readers, they don't want the 99 cent deals because they want them free. Um, but they still want more than the general population. 
Sweet Reader is not as interested in new releases and really not super willing to pay any price. Sweet Readers want free books. Um, and Avid Readers of both, um, I mean, it's a little bit better. So you better hope your Sweet Romance reader can also... I almost made a really bad sex joke. Um, you better hope your Sweet Romance reader sometimes has a naughty side is all I'm saying. But like I told the historical authors, if you can cross brand, it's good for you. So, you know, I have found, I've been writing sweet romance for a couple of years, and I really found my success when I started writing Christian romance. Now, I still write both, but I know most of my sales are coming from my Christian romance readers crossing over into sweet romance. So those aren't the avid genre fans. Those are the sometimes readers who can be swayed by an author they like. So for me, I wasn't making money until I became a Christian romance author. So it's just a very slight genre change. Um, and I'm still writing sweet. And there's a lot of overlap between those two genres. But it makes a difference. Let's look at the next graph. I was supposed to start on number one. Oh, well. <laughs> so here's the KU, Kindle, iBooks, blah, blah, blah. So sweet readers disproportionately unlikely to have an e-reader versus sexy readers. They're savvy. They've got e-readers. Sweet readers less likely to be on Kobo. Super unlikely to be on Google. Sweet readers like Nook, though. I can attest to that. Um, and also iBooks, which surprises me a little. Sweet readers are more likely to be on Kindle, but less likely to be on Kindle Unlimited. So these are your readers who want free books but can't afford KU or don't want to get KU for whatever reason. Um, your sexy readers are a little bit disproportionately high in KU. What else have we got? Um, let's pause there. And I want to say that especially considering which genres are super likely to have readers willing to pay for books versus super unlikely, um, the genres that came out at the bottom, or I guess at the top, let's let's make them winners, of wanting the most reader, the most free books were sweet romance and historical romance. And as a sweet romance author myself, and I probably get a couple hundred fan mail messages on a normal week, um, if I send a crap newsletter or don't send a newsletter, I only get like maybe 50. Um, but as someone who reads a lot of mail from my sweet readers, and my husband also reads it and he knows and my assistant also deals with it, I think that there's an invisible factor. So like people always like to say correlation does not equal causation. So it doesn't just because these two things look to be related, it doesn't mean one is causing the other. And in this case, I think the invisible variable that I did not collect is age. And I'm not trying to be ageist. I love my readers. A lot of them write to me and tell me about being 86 years young. And, um, you know, I'm a little old lady at heart and I have some great paying readers, too. Um, but looking at sweet and historical, like, I just know, I just know um, and call it a gut feeling because I don't have the data to support this. Next year, I will add in demographic data. Um, but I would also suggest to sweet and um, historical authors who have more of the freebie seekers to try to expand your audience to a little bit of a younger demographic, even if you can get cheaper clicks on Facebook ads if you're targeting 60 plus. Um, and that's not to say that, you know, no, no older people will buy books, but a lot of them are on fixed incomes or disability and they really truly can afford books, even if they want to. Um, you know, I get a lot of really sweet fan messages about how much it means to them, but they just can't afford books. And there's value in those readers, too. I'm just letting you know what I have found. And I, because I also think, like, when we're looking at the both bars, that um, younger readers, I think, are more open to reading sexy stuff versus older readers might be more offended by it. Total bias that I'm putting out there. I don't have the data to support it. This is what I think. I'm going to look at any questions or comments before I get to the third one. Um, Lori says she's just getting started with the Christian contemporary romance. So excited to hear this. Lori, going Christian romance has been a game changer for me. Um, I tried and I tried and I tried to get traction as a sweet romance author, put out my first Christian romance series. Those readers will come back and read my sweet romance. So those are sometimes sweet romance readers, avid Christian readers. And I don't think I have any readers who don't, who read my sweet, but don't read my Christian. And 
yes, it's a good place to be. Angie said a lot of what I saw related to wanting free books was they are on a fixed income. There you go. So it's it's not that readers think we should work for free. It, yeah. You know, there are legitimate reasons. And um, some of my best ARC readers are on fixed incomes. And some of my kindest fan mail comes from readers on fixed income. Every reader has value. So don't, like, get frustrated and say, ugh, freebie seekers. But, I mean, if you're, yeah, we're trying to make a living, right? So think about how you can work around that. I'm not saying cut them completely um, at all. I'm not saying that at all because I think they have huge value. But I am saying if you can cross brand on another genre or if you can scale down to reach some younger readers or if you can do things a little differently, move those members towards your ARC team, etc., it's good. Um, Irene says, I think older readers are tired of reading about sex. I think that too. Um, Jackie says, I keep hearing that Christian romance doesn't do as good as sweet or contemporary romance. Do you find that's not necessarily true? In my personal experience, that's not true even a little bit, but my personal experience is different than the data. According to the data, Christian readers are more likely to buy books than uh, Christian readers and contemporary romance readers are both more likely to buy than just sweet romance readers. And I think part of that is, like I said, older readers are more likely to be offended or just not want to read about this, the steamy stuff. So they're more likely to skew sweet. The exception is um, somebody who's a very strong faith. They, they can be 18 and not want to read about sex. And they're going to want the Christian fiction probably over the sweet romance because I know that some sweet Christian readers can sometimes even get offended by sweet romance if you throw a damn or a hell in there. I had to edit those out. I didn't think they're swearing there, according to them. Um, and uh, Christian readers can be offended by behind closed door scenes, which is technically sweet. So my sweet romances are basically Christian romance heat level, but <laughs> AKA may, they kiss once or twice and hold hands and it's a moment. Um, with uh, no behind closed door moments because that Christian readers, no, 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 but that can be okay for some sweet readers. So, yeah. Um, Becky says, my Christian readers even read my paranormal series and ask about my cozy mystery in progress. I thought my Christian readers are like, they really appreciate because I like I get so much fan mail like this that they really appreciate somebody writing wholesome stories that they can enjoy, that they can share with their children or grandchildren, that um, they don't have to be embarrassed by reading in public, um, that, you know, they're trying to escape the smut on TV. They say this a lot about TV. And they don't want to read that in their books. Um, and they don't know why perfectly good books have to be ruined by sex or language and things like that. So... Yeah. Um, I found my Christian readers, they're more likely to follow you anywhere because they're so appreciative um, and they're just really awesome people. I love my Christian readers. Um, Jennifer says, this is mostly for romance. I'm a science fiction author. I've been contemplating writing science fiction romance, though. So the sexy versus sweet um, is sexy versus sweet romance, but there is a science fiction um, science fiction. Um, mysteries, thrillers, epic fantasy, urban fantasy, young adult, and nonfiction are all non-romance uh, genres that were in the survey and have individual results. And I can tell you that when I posted the science fiction results, I said, hey, you guys have the best readers ever. Here's why. So it's very good news for science fiction. Um, <laughs> Nancy says, that's interesting that you think the older skew sweet. My demographics for Facebook ads for my sexy contemporary skew older. I think that all readers skew older because, um, okay, I'm, I think I'm 32. I always forget how old I am. Born in 1984. Yes, I'm 32 right now and I'm going to be 33 next month. So technically I'm young, even though I don't feel like it. People who are not me, <laughs> who are younger, they go out and do things. Um, they have kids, which I do. She's out with her dad right now. We can't do trick or treating because she's been throwing up, but we're going to do like family ice cream Sundays and a Halloween movie in bed and then take her to something this weekend in her Cinderella costume. But anyways, people who are younger, they have young kids. They're out taking the kids to the activities. They're out um, 
socializing, be on, being on the homeowners association. I don't know. They're doing things. They're out there. They, they have an active social life and work life and all that. And older people, they have more downtime and ability to read. Maybe they're empty nesters. Um, Sky Princess. Now it's the Chihuahua. They're, they could be empty nesters. They could, they could have more disposable income to read. Or they could have less disposable income so they can't go out and do things that cost money that they would like to do, like go to the movies or a concert or something. So they're looking at free books. So there's a lot that goes into um, into that. But I found regardless of any genre I run ads for, sexy, sweet, suspense, paranormal, sci-fi, YA, and I've done pretty much all the genres through Lit Ring because I do these list builders. So I've learned a lot about the genres. I don't care what genre you write, older does better every single time across the board. So that's a general trend. And if I was going to ask readers in the survey about their age, it wouldn't be like 18 to 25, 26 to 34. It would be like, I would have to really get the older. It would be like under 40, 41 to 55, 56 to 70, like 71 to, to 80, 81 plus or something. Like that would be a better way to see the variation. Um, let's see what else I have. Uh, Anne says, I was surprised to see mystery books are the most read. Is this the same for the cozy mystery niche or just for normal mystery books? How large do you think the cozy mystery section is? And we have a great cozy reader base because one of the premium list builders I did that um, gets – so we have a budget of 4000 the authors pay in, and I basically get subscribers until the budget runs out, and I guarantee 5000 So a couple times I've had to pay out of pocket to reach that. But I learned, Sky Princess, for the love of, I learned a lot about um, each genre and what um, targets to use, what creatives to use, what kind of language, what works with those readers. By far the easiest cozy mystery was my first time advertising it. It was so easy. I had to do almost nothing. The original creatives worked. Um, the audiences kept working. It needed so little maintenance. It was like, it was a beautiful bliss of a thing. I love doing the cozy mystery list builder and those authors got a big list. I think about 7,000. Um, after that, the next easiest is paranormal romance and sexy romance. And Christian, because that's my genre, so I just know it really well. Um, but... <laughs> Yes. Uh, I think, you know, thrillers is also one of our top genres and we and romantic suspense is a top genre, which crosses over with those a bit. But definitely because we have a large, sweet and Christian readership, I know those readers love cozy mysteries because they're my readers and they love it when I recommend them. Um, so I would say we have a pretty good mix of cozy mystery and harder mystery. Um, I myself, one of my favorite genres is psychological thrillers. So just throwing that out there. I love psychological thrillers. And right now I'm reading a really great historical fiction. The Girl with No Name. I forget who the author is, but it's really good. Uh, okay. So the last chart. And keep bringing the questions if you have them. The last sexy versus sweet. Oh, my gosh. My husband and daughter are home, so I have to make this fast. Um, so with this chart, sweet more likely wants arcs. So they are willing to review for you. They don't want more interaction dogs for now it's the golden retriever <laughs> sweet more likely to, to want different book content so to be offended by sex and swearing yeah we know that sexy they want you to chill out on newsletters a little bit more send less often send shorter emails not so many swaps uh we have giveaways readers who like bull they're more likely to like giveaways Lower prices work better on sexy versus free works better on sweet. Sweet readers don't need wider availability. They just want it free. <laughs> sexy readers are more likely to want to meet you. And that's what I got. Readers who read both are pretty happy. That green bar. That's what I've got. I, I hope that helped. Um, sign up at litring.com slash about or litring.com slash authors. Make sure you sign up for the author list and you will get my 24-page white paper as soon as I finish it tomorrow. Search the group for your genre. Um, I've put it all there except for the sexy and sweet, which I held back for the video and for the white paper. 
So I'm actually going to be live for you guys again tomorrow because I'm starting my launch for profit course. So I'm going to do a video here to kick that off and I'll have a special offer as well. And I will look better for that one because it lives forever in the Teachable Archive. I'm sorry for who's angry and who's sad, but I love you guys. Uh, I really hope the status help, helps. Take some time to look at it and understand it. And happy Halloween.